All right, so I've got another NPC upgrade build for you today. And today we're looking at Cinder Kala's full course AC. Now, what are the main issues of this build? Well, it can be pretty much be boiled down to two things. One, the apparatus of Surbad. The way it is, since they're nerfed, they're actually quite bad weapons, right? And also, original booster, the Kakaku, is just incredibly bad for this build. And that's kind of where the main issues of this build lie. And I gotta be honest, considering, you know, Carla being the head of RAD and all that, it actually kind of really pains me to switch off of the apparatus. But as you can see, I'm using the box missiles in the background footage here. And quite frankly, the box missiles are just so much better than the apparatus that you can't even really compare them, right? And again, this is probably one of the builds where um, the changes actually almost pain me to make them, right? Uh, because I really, really wanted to stick with the apparatus. But I tried using the boss missiles even just one time uh, after like literally like hours of kind of tweaking this build and trying to get it to a decent state. And the difference was so immediate and so big that I just could not switch to the box missiles right. And again, I really didn't want to make that change. I really wanted to stick to the apparatus, but the difference really is just that big, right? Uh, and obviously switching out the boosters. Pretty simple thing to do. Switch them out for the Burzels. Even though the Burzel did get nerfed in the most recent patch, they're actually still pretty good. I think some people are kind of uh, overreacted a bit seeing some of the numbers nerfed. But obviously, they are more energy intensive. But in terms of having you know decently fast heavy builds, they are still going to be the king of that, right? Uh, so yeah, the Burzel is still pretty good. And it definitely makes the build feel a lot better than the Kikaku boosters, right? And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to say about the build. Let's get into the details. Now, getting into the weapons, obviously, we've got some changes here, particularly to the handheld missile launchers, the apparatus. I've switched these out from the P19 MLTs. And, you know, I really, really wanted to keep the apparatus on to keep sort of that iconic theme and look that Carla has going. But quite frankly, the apparatus at this point are just so much worse than all the other handheld missiles that they're really just not worth considering uh, realistically, right? Because if you look at the damage and impact of the apparatus compared to the MLT, uh, it's not really that much more. But in exchange, your reload time is more than twice as long. And quite frankly, this just sees the apparatus so far behind the MLT, uh, the P19s, that they're just there's no reason you would ever use the apparatus over this weapon. To be frank, um, even over like the split missile or the pulse missile launcher, same thing. There's realistically no reason you would ever use the apparatus instead. I guess for the, you know, at least for the pulse missile launcher, you could argue the energy load, right? But even then, that's not a particularly good argument, in my opinion. Just the apparatus are just bad, right? It's, it is what it is. They suck a lot. And I tried it for a really long time to make this build, like, be decent with the apparatus, but I switched to the P19s just to, like, experiment with them for just a little bit, and the difference was so immediate and so huge that I just couldn't go back. Now, moving on to the suits, the back missiles, I did decide to keep these. They're actually pretty solid as far as back-mounted missiles go. Uh, they're definitely not the best back-mounted missiles, in my opinion. Not by a long shot, really, right? Uh, you know, and the closest comparison to these is probably the, the P05 MLT-10s, the 10 cell 45 missile launchers. And, yeah, they do relatively similar damage and impact. And kind of the main difference here is these suits get three like quick volleys and then a longer reload uh between those three volleys right and you know kind of one dis i guess like one sort of disadvantage of the suits is that they kind of suck really bad at close range but they do seem to be like particularly good at sort of mid ranges i find that they tend to be really good at sort of pinning an opponent down uh so i actually do like these missiles quite a bit right and yeah, that's really all there is to say about the weapons. Now let's go ahead and move on to the frame. Now getting the frame, we've only got one change here, but let's go over everything as always. First, we've got the appetizer head. And this is a pretty solid head. Uh, it's really light on energy load, which is quite nice for this build because we're kind of already struggling on energy. And it's got pretty good defenses for us weight. There's really not too much to complain about here. Obviously, there are definitely better head parts, but you know, this one's decent enough to keep. Now, moving on, this change we've got, I've got the Tianqing Core, which is from the original main dish. And obviously, the main thing here is just simply the generator output adjustment. The main dish doesn't have great generator output, uh, and I needed more generator output to make the Santai work with this build. And I wanted to use the Santai specific because the Burzel's recent nerf. The Burzel was quite energy hungry now, so I definitely wanted that really big energy bar 
that the Santai offers, right? And that's the main thing. Um, it's not that like the main dish is bad or anything, right? The main dish is actually a pretty solid core. This is a good core, for sure, but unfortunately, it's just not good for this specific build, right? Uh, now, moving on, we've got the Salad Arms. Uh, you know, the defensive stats, offensive stats, I mean, don't matter here at all. Firearm, melee spec, we don't care. Recoil control, we don't care. I guess you kind of care about arm slot limit, but obviously the hand-up missiles are pretty lightweight, so also doesn't matter for this build. Uh, but, you know, they do have good defenses, which is obviously the only thing we really care about for our arms here. So, you know, not really much to complain over here. Good defenses, good ener uh, energy defense, which, you know, I'm quite fond of. And energy weapons can output some pretty crazy damage if you have bad energy defense. So it's nice that the arms have really good energy defense. And finally, we've got the dessert legs. Uh, this is another just kind of decent legs. Nope. They're low, low uh, on energy load. They're not, you know, the heaviest legs in the game, although they're pretty close. They've got decent defenses. You know, realistically, there's probably not that much reason you would ever use them over the VE42As, right? Because the VE42As don't weigh that much more or drain that much more energy, but they do have better defensive stats. Uh, you know, there wasn't a big enough... There's not a big enough difference here that you have to switch or anything like that. It, it's, it's a small difference. You know, en enough to care about if you're, like, optimizing for PvP or something like that, but not enough that you just, like, absolutely have to, right? Uh, you know, again, just pretty solid legs all around. Just not the literal best in the game. And, uh, yeah, that's all there is to say about the frame. Let's move on into the internals. I switched Carlo's original Kakaku boosters out for the Burzels. Even despite their nerfs, I still think the Burzels are the best option for this build. And I don't think I really need to explain why the Kakaku isn't great for this build. This, the, the, the Kakaku boosters are really only good for melee boosting. And obviously there's no melee weapon on this build. So, you know, there's no reason to use the Kakaku booster on this build at all, right? Now, the Burzel on the other hand, again, despite its nerfs, still gives this build quite a lot of speed. I mean, the actual speed of the Burzel wasn't affected. The main thing affected, of course, was the energy consumption, right? And that's why I had switched out this build to be using the Sanitai, which we'll get into in a moment. But, you know, to help alleviate this energy issues. You know, with the Burzel, this thing hits an assault boost speed of about 390, which is pretty good considering the, you know, this build is breaking over 100k weight. So, you know, definitely pretty decent amount of speed. It's, of course, not the fastest build in the game by a long shot. But, you know, it's also not going to be the slowest either, right? Which is kind of, I guess, the important thing. But the Burzel, still pretty good in my opinion. You've just got to be better with your energy management. Uh, now, moving on to the FCS, we've got the P10 SLT. Pretty sure she has this on originally, uh, but there's really no reason to switch this for the, the missile lock correction is basically the only thing we care about here. Uh, Multi-lock correction, I guess you could care about that to a little extent now that we do have the box missiles. But the box missiles lock on so fast already anyways that it doesn't matter, right? Uh, so yeah, P10 SLT, no reason to switch this. Now finally, we've got the Santaya, which I switched from the original Hokushi. And obviously, like I mentioned, the main thing here is just simply the much bigger energy capacity. Now, it also puts a couple, you know, restraints on, I guess, constraints on this build by having worse energy output and being much heavier, right? Now, in terms of how this, uh, the extra weight affects the speed of this build, it only reduces the assault boost speed by about 10, which is, you know, not insignificant, but it's not enough to outweigh just simply the far superior energy capacity that this build offers in my opinion right uh 1300 energy gives you much much more wiggle room on your energy management and it just feels much better to play with in my opinion now uh the hokushi just does not have the energy capacity to really fuel the brazils in my opinion anymore right yeah switch out the santai it feels a lot better uh the big thing here is that you just have far far worse energy supply efficiency this build is quite struggling on that quite a bit it actually does take quite a while to refill your energy bar. So again, uh, you have to be uh, kind of careful with that, right? You know, don't get yourself caught out too hard. But again, you've got so much more energy to work with that it's a lot easier to actually manage your energy properly, right? And of course, for the uh, expansion, she has assault armor on originally. I didn't feel a reason to change this. And that's all there is to say about the build. As always, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Before we get into the gameplay footage, a quick thank you to our members as always. Any tier of the membership helps a lot. Support really matters to me a lot as well. And of course, if you do become a member, you get some benefits. You get your name here, for example. If you do the purple cat tier or higher, you get to see days of it. Uh, you get to see videos a day early. And uh, now, let's go and get to the gameplay footage. You may have won this battle, but I'll win the war. Vigi, down. Partitions 
My motto, tourist. Get your laughs while you can. I don't know what you're up to, but you better make it worth it. Chetty, you know what we're dealing with. Pin that tourist down. Roger, Chief. Support him. Apologies for the delay, King. 
watch this one. See where they go on a raven's wings. All enemy ACs destroyed. Mission accomplished. <laughs>